Hello, in this video I'm going to go over how my um, decision tree machine learning um, program works. Uh, what, what, it, what it does uh, in brief is it um, interprets uh, packet files and gets the packet data from those packet files and then uh, cleans the data and then feeds it into um, the a decision tree uh, classifier. Uh, and that we're, what we're classifying is whether or not the packets are denial of service packets, i.e. are the packets um, inputted, or are, are they part of a denial of service attack? Um, so, these are all of the libraries that I use. Um, so, install those um, if you want to do this at home. But um, the first thing I want to, we'll, we'll go in, um, I'm just going to have a show you a brief overview of everything. So, um, what we need before um, we do anything is we need um, a place to store our packet data. So um, here's the script here and here is the folder, The here's the packet file folder and in here we have four, well we have four di different packet files. So the prefixes are quite important. So um training underscore so you need you need training data in order to um train your model so um we need to obviously assign what is training data and what is testing data so test underscore is test data um which can have DDoS packets or non DDoS packets. Training underscore means that the packet file contains only uh, um, non DDoS packets, and training underscore DDoS can, means that the packet file contains DDoS um, packets. So as you can see, I have two two normal packet training files. I have one very large DDoS packet file. Those are all used in training, and then we have a test file here. So that's where our data is. So I suppose I'll start here. So the first thing that happens is um, we set up graphs. Now, the reason why we have we're using graphs is, is that we want to visualize what decisions are being made in the uh, decision tree. So that's why we have graphs. And in order to um, uh, let the let the program talk to graphs, because graphs is a, is a is an application as well as a library. So you need to install both the app, the software and the library so we need to point to where the application is installed the more specifically the binary file folder but anyway um and then we call main so main is the main method so here it is so what we do first is we create packet file location so this is if you don't have the um folder that I just showed you, the packet files folder, the program will create it for you. Um, okay, so we do that and then we validate the files. So um, what if somebody puts like a Word document or an image into this folder? Well, that wouldn't be good. Um, so in order to prevent an error, there it is here we need to call validate files. So what it does is it goes to the packet files folder and, it, and uh, for every file in the directory, if the file is um, uh, 
so yeah, so if the files if the files there, you append it to file names, and then uh, for every file name in here, if it has pcap ng, which is an extension for packet files, or pcap, which is another extension for packet files, uh, then it's fine. Else, it's not, and we discard it. So, um. Yeah, so just a bit of validation here. Now, if you do want to add other types of packet file, you can just add it to this um, this statement here. Now, the only thing I'd say is make sure that PyShark supports that file type. Um, we will Py, where PyShark is used, as we'll later discuss. Um, on. Uh, in order to uh, obtain the uh, essentially read the packet files into the program so we'll we'll see that here soon so we make two um, lists here this will store our data frames um, once they've been processed so you now we've just made them here and then we do for file name invalid files we need to see what the uh, prefix is um here so yeah uh one thing i forgot to mention is that um the test test needs to be separated into uh ddos and non ddos uh data um for this to work so right now we only ha really have one test file which will uh, only contain non ddos packets but the system won't know that but anyway we'll, so so if you do want to have ddos packets you need to uh to test if the system can detect ddos packets you'd need to add the test underscore ddos um packet file anyway so it checks the prefixes and then calls uh and then it, then uh it calls obtain data on the uh packet file uh so let's see what obtain data does so it takes in the file name and ddos status now ddos status is simply a boolean um so true or false so i believe it's true if um yeah so it's true if it is ddos and false if it isn't um so yeah so we do cap equals pyshock dot file capture so this is just reading the file and I would do four packet in cap so for every packet in the packet file and we make this little list called packet file I um, mean sorry packet packet data here so packet data is going to be the list that we populate with the information from the packet and then we're gonna at the end we're gonna add packet data to packet file data and let's keep basically keep ex make, extending that list. So, um, what are the features that we want? Well, we want um, a lot of features. We want um, we want source port, a uh, destination port destination address, source address, protocol, packet size, um, uh, how, how many packets of that type per second, and we also want, um, what do we also want? We did the ports, da, 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 da. we also want whether or not it's a DDoS packet or not. Uh, but yes, okay. So that that's the fe those are the features. So um, in order to get those features, we need to essentially extract the data from the packet objects, which are these here. So so packet dot sniff time gets the times the uh, timestamp. Uh, so um, that timestamp of the packet. Ta the, the you get the timestamp of the packet whenever it was recorded. So um, yeah, so we need that in order to calculate per second. Um, 
Now, different protocols um, have different uh, properties. For example, the ARP, the ARP packet doesn't have source port, uh, destination port, etc. So uh, we're gonna put none there for their um, for their uh, for the data there because there is no data, so we'll put it none, i.e. null. Uh, so, um, PySharp splits packets by the IP protocol it follows. So IPv6 uh, has its own if statement branch, and then IPv4 has its own if statement branch. Um, if TCP, then get the TCP source and destination port. If UDP, if it's an ICMVP file, uh, we, don't, we don't have its port numbers, so uh, ICMPv6 doesn't use port numbers, so uh, that's why we have this here. Uh, you know, so this is just accommodating for different protocols and their quirks. Um, you may note um, the ones and zeros. So um, right now, what's happening? Um, if I look, at, show you the columns. Um, we have these weird uh, columns like source IP underscore NA. So what does that mean? Well, what are we storing in there? Well, we're storing our ones and our zeros. Uh, the zeros mean that the data is present and the ones mean that it is a null value. So in here, since we're putting none, we also need to add a one to the next column in order to denote the that there is null data in that previous column. So, and the reason why we do that is because we need to um, essentially uh, accommodate for the null data because we, we can't have null in our final training or in our final data sets because the, the decision tree uh, learning model um, will only accept an all numeric input so uh yeah so we da, 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 yes well, all we're, what we're doing is we're doing um our sifting through using pi shark in order to obtain this data and then dependent upon the ddos status we say false or true um and then we add it to that and then we return the data frame back okay so then what we need to do is calculate the mean packets per second. Now remember, this is why we have our timestamp uh, column, uh, because um, what we do is we get the last time and the first time, and then we subtract the last time from the first time, and then that gets us the overall time of the capture. And once we have the overall time of the capture, we can then, um, or we can just park that data and then what we can do is we can calculate the like uh, uh, the sum of all of the packets uh, grouped by source IP for example um, so we're getting the the occurrence essentially here and then you simply divide um, you essentially um, divide occurrence here you divide occurrence by um, the time difference so uh, yeah so that's essentially it there uh, in a nutshell so that's working out the per second um, averages there um, which is useful because if you think about it um, what we're trying to do is discern between DDoS packets and non DDoS packets so a DDoS packet will probably have a high per second um, value compared to a non-DDoS packet because of course denial of service stems from the flooding of packets uh, typically so uh, yes so that's why we do this um, and it's interesting that we can do this based on the data given in the packet file um, so we do that for every single um, 
possibility here. We we all do it for every single data frame, <coughs> and then we append the data frame to the corresponding whether or not, uh, list, whether it's testing or training data. Um. So, then what we have to do is we have to. So right now we have a list of pandas data frames. So well, we need to make a big old list of them. Not big old list. Uh, sorry, we need to merge them all into one big pandas data frame. So, um, uh, so what we do is we do pd dot concat, which concatenates to, well, concatenates all of the pandas frames in the list. Um, of course, here we have our print statement saying that say you didn't have any data of a certain type, you say no training data provided. Uh, so it'll output to the user what's wrong. Um, so, uh, <coughs> um, right, uh, so this bit here, the process df, um, is called after, oh, sorry, sorry, let me go back. So, um, mm, where were we? Yes, here. So process df is called here. And it's also called down here, but you can note that cleaning training data is called uh, as a as a parameter here. So the result of this is called here. So um, we'll have a look at that now. So we're passing in the big training data um, frame now into clean training data. So what what does this do? Well, as I said before, your machine learning model. Well, decision tree model can only take in numeric data. So what do we do for the data that isn't numeric, i.e. things like source IP or protocol, um, etc. So those would be strings, typically you'd store, store those as strings in a database and indeed Py, PyShark returns them as strings. So Pandas has a great um, great data type called categories, which essentially uh, what it does is it takes those strings and converts them into a number. Essentially what it does is it indexes um, the strings so that they're assigned to a number and then it stores the number, um, It's called, the number's called a category code, uh, to into the actual um, frame itself into the into the data frame itself so that it's uh, so that means that the, the the whole data frame would be then be numeric and then how it gets the string data back is in the background what it has is it's got this index uh, table in the in the background and when it sees that it's a category code of whatever number it can then look it up and then provide you with the string uh, result whenever you um, decide to print the data frame, for example. So um, it's quite it's quite useful for us because we can then con explicitly convert these objects, well, these strings, these objects uh, into categories. Okay, so we do that, and then what happens next? We all we do train underscore cats. Now these three. Uh, these three uh, functions I did not write. Uh, it's from it's taken from the fast.ai library, but um, I've sort of um, had an issue trying to install it. So what I did is I just commandeered the uh, the functions. But um, anyway, so you know the way we explicitly converted those um, those fields into categories. If any, if there. If if we if any uh, if we've missed any other sh other categories we can we can any other uh, fields that should be categories uh, we can check the type so is it a string and if it is then we can set it to a category type so it's just a like a double check almost um, so anyway we do that and then we return the the training data frame right so we're returning it here. And then we're calling process df. So a lot of these uh, parameters here we don't really care about. Again, this was lifted from the fast.ai <laughs> library. But um, essentially, um, what we really care about is that we're iterating through and we're calling fix missing and numericalize. So what is fix missing? Well, 
fix missing is going to check to see whether or not we have any null data left and if we do have any null data then we're going to make a new column and we're going to call it whatever the column name was plus na uh, alright and then what we're going to do to the to the other column that has this essentially what it's doing is it's going through every entry in a column and then if it has a bit piece of null data it's going to do the I underscore and I create that column and it's going to make the whole column have a median value uh, so that's the that way it ensures that the um, that the data frame can then be used but um, we try to avoid having to use this because of course it's going to make everything a median which isn't useful but it's good to have just in case numericalize um, is going to use essentially what it's doing uh, it's going through all of the the uh, category codes okay remember I mentioned those previously and if there is null data and say for example uh, an IP isn't there a source IP isn't there um, uh, so that's going to be null and then it's converted in a category well that category code is going to be negative one uh, we don't like negatives um, in this particular uh, system so what we're going to do is we're just going to increment by one all of the category codes to ensure that they're not going to be um, negative um, essentially that's all that function does um, again this is just more sort of ensuring that we that the, that the data frame is fit for purpose and everything uh, most most uh, machine learning is essentially pre-processing your data so uh, you know it's a lot of emphasis is put on that to ensure that it'll work with most uh, packet data so you can see that it's mostly the same sorry we're, 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 yes so yeah we're, we're, we're doing that on the training and the testing but note that is test is 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 um true in this case and is false in that case now is test um uh if it's true then it's going to return um two data frames one with the y value uh so that's going to be like the answers for example so um yeah we're going to get two two data frames back if is test is true one of which is um one of which is the test data with no y value which is the ddos if it whether or not it's the ddos value because remember we explicitly state whether or not it's a ddos or not in our in our in our bits here whenever we're doing our um if ddos status here so what we're essentially doing is removing that and we need to remove it in order so that the model doesn't just know the answer. So, um, yeah. And then we're going to return with Y, which is going to be the answers. And that's what we're going to be used to comparing it, to compare it, right? Uh, we obviously don't want to do that with the test, the training data, because we need the Y value anyway in the in the data so it knows what, what's the difference between a DDoS and a non-DDoS uh, piece of data. So... We do that, yeah. So that again is another aspect of process underscore df. Um, so I want to explain that as well. Uh, okay, so we've done that now. So where did we get to? We got to. We got it. We got to. Yes. So we're removing uh, timestamp. Um, why? Because timestamp, as you recall, was used to make the per second feature, but now we don't really need timestamp anymore because I found during my testing that timestamp sort of uh, confused the program. Um, you know, uh, it, it, it put too much weight on the time that the packet was sent at. Uh, 
if you think about it, uh, it doesn't really matter what time a DDoS packet is sent at. If you, uh, you know, uh, a DDoS attack could happen at any time, so it kind of defe defeated the purpose of having a timestamp thing. And already it served its purpose whenever we were calculating the per second uh, thing, so that's why we're removing this. And again, we're removing it in the test data as well here. Note that we've, we're only doing it for the for the uh, for the uh, predict for the for the for the testing data that we're going to put into the folder because in this list here we have in test data we have uh, the testing data and then we also have the answers and actually a few people are printing the answers out there but anyway so yes we remove that and then we're going to train or we're going to make our model and we're going to make a decision tree classifier this is from SK Learn. Uh, splitter equals best, so it's gonna use. It's not gonna. It's gonna try and use the best splitter possible. Um, and then m dot fits. So this is the bit where we're training. So the training df is this. Our, our training data frame, our big old training data frame. Um, and then the the y value is um, the DDoS column. So we want to predict whether or not it's a DDoS, true or false, essentially. Uh, okay, and then we're doing m dot underscore predict. So we, I want, I'm asking the model to predict the classification of the test data. So whether or not it's true, if, if it's um, DDoS or not. And then we're going to print um, the guesses, or the predictions, and then we're going to print the answers, and then we're going to calculate the accuracy. And then after that, the main bulk of the program is done. What we can then do is we can model our decision tree. Uh, this is using GraphViz again. So we've got two class names, non-DDoS and DDoS. And then we're going to model the graph and then we're going to render it. And we're going to give it to the user. Um, this is a function uh, which is doing the, the rendering, not the rendering, the draw tree. Uh, where is draw tree called? Hold on. Do we even need it? Where is draw tree? Where is draw, draw underscore tree? Oh, there's only a course there. Well, then that's all right. Then we can remove it then. Uh, yeah, so uh, we can run it now and we can, uh, we can uh, see uh, what happens then. Um, just gonna use the packet data that we've um, already uh, seen. Yeah, so there we go. Where where um, det files detected? Those th things there, files there, and then we're gonna be using our the files used. Gonna be all of them. Uh, so this runtime error occurs. Now the reason for this is that it, it, the PyShark library is attempting to write. To read another file when it's when it's not even finished reading the first file, for example, so it's having a runtime error. It's trying to make another event loop when another event loop is already running. The way you fix this is using asynchronous uh, programming, but um, for this it's fine. We're just gonna wait for the runtime error to uh, pass, and it will pass. It's simply just a warning. Uh, Okay, there we go. So it's run. Uh, there we go. Obviously, the more pack files you have, the longer it's going to take. So this is our predictions. Okay, this is what the program predicted, and then this is the answer. And remember, it's all false uh, because we only have false testing data. Remember, if if we had true test, if we had true testing, this would be test underscore DDoS. So it says false, 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 and then it gets true, true, yes, we think it's, yeah, so those would be wrong assumptions there, we're wrong predictions. Um, so we get an accuracy of 0 0.76, which is actually pretty good, considering um, that we don't want to overfit. Now, overfitting means that you essentially try and make this number go up, um, and, we, and how you do that is uh, essentially by looking at the data and making specific changes to the program in order to accommodate for that data. So you're 
program your your model becomes more accurate but it only becomes more accurate for that data set so then it becomes less versatile essentially so there's that trade-off and i think around 70 75 is a good benchmark um i feel of accuracy because it's better than simply guessing true or false but um it's not overfitting Ooh. uh once you have your output um we can then go on and we can have a look at the uh, the PDF file that was produced. Um, so the visualization using Graphviz will return a PDF file with our decision tree in it. Um, and as we can see, um, so let me show you how you interpret this. So this is our decision tree and how to interpret this. So per second, right, so this, is, this line here is the decision that was made at this point. Um, the guinea value, now the guinea value, the way it's been explained to me is how sure, is essentially a measure of how sure the program is with its split. So, uh, yeah, so that's the, yeah, so so how sure of itself that it hasn't misclassified something at this point. Samples is a number of samples, uh, and class is the predominant class that it thinks that everything is in, and then, um, values so we've got so it's it's thinking um we've got 987 at this point we've got 987 like non ddos and then like 2826 ddos uh so uh packets and you can see if we go in the packet files you can see just by the size file size that we've got a big large amount of ddos packets and less so in the training packets so um anyway let's have a look so, is per second smaller than or equal to 0.027? So, um, true or false? And then, um, is destination port smaller than or equal to 9? Um, remember that this is a cat code. Um, so, again, I don't really think this split is very good. But... Um, I mean, it's there and it, and it's and it's classified stuff. So this might be a source bit area where um, the misclassification happened because the destination port re it can matter. It can matter, but um, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, and you can see that the guinea value is relatively high there uh, because it's it's thinking well, a split might not be the great be best, but uh, yeah, DDoS and non DDoS, brilliant, cool. Um, size so size is done in bytes so the packet size uh, so is it greater than 57 and then yeah and then you get the image you get the point that it, it goes down until so it will only stop when the guinea value is zero where it's sure that it's classified everything well quote unquote perfectly uh but yeah you can see um you can see its logic here so it gets down to the fine detail here where it's only got one sample uh, and then it's placing it. So you can see where the errors might may lie in the logic. But again, we're not trying to overfit our program. So, you know, but I think that the visualization is quite interesting, quite fun. And you get to see, like, where all the decisions were made. And maybe what features you can cut. For example, the, the, the destination port seems to be the seems to be the well, destination IP and port maybe 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 we don't need to have those features in there if they're going to cause some some of these types of splits but then on the other hand maybe 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 they're necessary uh, so what we would need to do is a lot more testing uh, so we couldn't really say for sure now but this tool this visualization tool will give us the ability to um, test. Um, so this was done in GraphViz um, automatically by the program and yeah, it's returned as a PDF file in the directory. Um, yeah, uh, in the directory of your script. Um, but yeah, that's um, essentially it in terms of explaining how, what this program does and how it works. Um, it was great fun to work on. Uh, I do like the machine learning, uh, especially when it's when it's when the result can be used uh, quite practically in um, security, for example. Um, but yeah, um, that's everything then. Yeah, uh, in terms of program. So thank thank you for watching.
Uh, goodbye.